Welcome back to Hot Rod High School. In today's episode, we're going to be using this Amco brake lathe to machine a drum brake. So get your coveralls on, your safety glasses on. Let's go to work. Let's start by getting familiar with our machine. So it's very similar to the disc brake lathe just a couple of things that are a bit different. So we still have a cutter head on this piece of equipment. And it is, it just has a single cutter on it though, because there's only one surface that we need to machine on a drum brake. We have the handle that drives this cutter head in and out to make contact with the brake. And then we also have another handle back here and when we turn this, that is going to drive the spindle in and out so that the drum can make contact with every part of the cutter. As before, we got our on off switch. And on this one, we don't have any automatic feed handle back there. This one has this little lever to operate our automatic feed. Okay, our first step in the machining process is to get a measurement of the brake before we ever start uh, machining or cutting into it. So I'm gonna set up this drum brake micrometer to be able to measure the inside diameter of how big this is. And then after our cut, this inside diameter, we're gonna shave off a little bit of it. And this is going to expand and be a little bit bigger measurement after the cut is finished. So first I gotta set this up and this is about 10 to 11 inches across here. So I'm going to find the number 10 and 11 and I'm gonna set my left hand side of the gauge up right at that 10 to 11 mark. Now that, that means that the other side of the gauge can start off anywhere as small as right there the number 10 and go all the way out to the end of the number 11. So each one of these marks is another 125 thousandths of an inch added on to our measurement. We'll go into greater detail on how to use this tool at a later video. So I'm gonna just take, I got my left-hand side of the gauge already set up at that 10 to 11 mark. I'm gonna take the right-hand side of the gauge and I wanna move it out until it makes contact. You can also see on this gauge here, it has this little dial that as I push in on it, it spins that dial. And so we're gonna go and make contact. And then we're gonna go one mark further from where that contact was made so that that dial should make good contact and be able to, to spin around and get us our final measurement. So in order to get our measurement here, I got an 11 over on this side and an 11 over on this side. So I know that I'm dealing with an 11 inch break. Each one of these marks past the 11 is another 125 thousandths. So we go one, two, three, four. Well, it's 500 thousandths plus two more. That's 750 thousandths of an inch or three quarters of an inch. So I got 750, so I got 11 inches, 750 thousandths. And now I'm going to take and move this around inside the drum. I'm just gonna kind of look for the biggest measurement that I can find while moving this around. And it's giving me a measurement of 50. So that's 50 more thousandths of an inch. So we had 11.750 plus 50 more is 11 inches, 800 thousandths. Now setting it up on the machine, we have a very similar setup as we did with the disc brake lathe. We got the inside clamp. We've got the spring that goes on the clamp there. We found a cone that is the right diameter to fit into 
the hole inside the middle of the drum. We've got the outside clamp, and then you have your weighted spacers and the locking nut. And the locking nut on this one also is going to end up being a reverse thread. So lefty tidy, righty loosey. Okay, let's go ahead and begin the process of installing this drum brake onto our brake lathe. So I'll start off with the first clamp. Next, I'll install our spring. And now the centering comb. I want to be careful while installing the drum brake onto the centering cone. Make sure that it doesn't fall off of there, cause damage to the shaft. Next, we'll put on our weighted spacer, follow that up with the vibration dampening spacer, and now that reverse thread locking nut. Okay, same as on the other tool, put my wrench onto it and then just give it a couple of quick taps. And now I've got my brake installed and ready to be machined after we install the vibration belt. So just like in that other one, taking care of these vibrations, making sure that this thing doesn't rattle as it's being machined, very important. So we'll just take and wrap the belt around the outside of the drum. Just install it so it's on there tight. We don't want this thing to fall off while it's rotating because that can come out and hit somebody. That wouldn't be good. All right. And now we have a drum that's ready to be machined. So now I'm going to turn the machine on. That's going to start the drum to spinning. And I'm going to turn this handle back here in the back end of the machine, which is going to drive the drum brake as close to the cutter as we need to, to be able to set up to make our cut. So I'll just take and put the camera in here, showing our brake drum. And then I will move our drum back into place and get the cutter head installed all the way toward the back there. We don't want it to be quite all the way to the back, maybe about half an inch from the very back portion of this uh, drum brake. Next, I'm gonna use this handle right here, which is going to move the cutter head in and out. I'm just gonna move it far enough to make contact with that brake drum. And we're gonna, same as the last one, we're gonna see it, we're gonna hear it, we're gonna kind of feel it all at the same time. Go nice and slow and easy so we don't mar up the brake when we're making that initial contact. Okay, we've made contact. And hopefully you can see that line that's been made in there. And now we're gonna take that other handle and just drive it all the way back until we're making contact with the back surface of that brake drum.
Okay, we now have the cutter head driven all the way back in there to the very back wall of that brake drum. And now we're ready to engage the automatic feed and it's gonna go through and cut that brake for us. So we'll go back to that little lever right here and just pop it in. And now this handle is going to start slowly turning and that'll drive that spindle outward, which will make the cutter head come into contact with the rest of the brake drum. We're about halfway through our cut now, and you can kind of see in there, you know, that clean area compared to the unfinished uncut area on our drum brake as it goes. And so, this is just part of the waiting game. Once again, this is a time where you need to be here observing this piece of equipment, making sure that it's been set up correctly, making sure that nothing's gonna fall off or come apart or that somebody who doesn't understand how the machine operates might come into contact with it. We wanna make absolute sure that everything is working appropriately with this machine while it is running and operating. Never leave equipment unattended. So we just now have gotten to the end of our cut. This machine works a lot quicker than that disc brake lathe to go through and make our cut. And now it's just come off of the end. It's no longer cutting. And so at this point here, I would take my automatic feed handle and I would just take and turn that switch off. And now it's no longer feeding. And now I can turn off the tool. At this point, we can go through and see how well the cut was made. Should be a nice, smooth, clean finish on here. And now we can take it off of the tool and be able to measure it. Okay, I have my drum brake back off of our brake lathe. We got a nice, smooth, clean finish on there. This thing would be ready to install on the vehicle after we do our last step, which is getting our measurement of how much material we've removed from the inside of this drum brake. So if you recall, the last time we set this up to the 11 over on this side and the 11 over on this side. And then we had one, two, three, four, five, six marks past the 11 each one of those marks is worth 125 thousandths of an inch. So this is 11 inches, 750 thousandths. If you recall on the gauge reading, we got a reading of 50 thousandths more. So this is 11 inches, 800 thousandths is what we were reading when we first started. Now I can put my micrometer back into place inside this brake drum. I'm going to spin it around just like last time. And I'm getting a reading of 62. So if it was 800, 000, 11 inches, seven, uh, 800 thousandths uh, before, it's now 11 inches, 812 thousandths. So we've taken 12 thousandths of an inch off of this brake during the cutting process. And that's it. That is using a drum brake lathe to machine a drum brake.